Good morning. Yes, my name's Sam Hunt, um, Program Director for Unbox Creativity in the UK. And this is a session called Imagine and Design, the R&D journey to 10 experiments in cre collaborative creativity. And for the next 15 minutes or so, I want to talk about the core ideas or core idea uh, that underpin the public program of Unboxed, the bedrock on which the 10 commissions and everything else you've heard about are built. I think you've heard a little bit about the what through um, Vicky and Phil's talk. Um, there will be plenty of time in sessions today, particularly in the next session, to talk about the how. Um, by that I mean the R&D itself, the ideation processes, how the program of Unbox came about. I also think the real value in understanding those processes will be from the hearing from the experiences of those who took part in them. Um, so for the sake of clarity and time, I will focus on the why and hopefully get across the one sing singular, super simple, unifying idea that binds the entire endeavor of Unboxed together. Um, but first, I want to reflect on the brief that the creative teams were asked to respond to. And as an aside, throughout this talk, I will be sharing random images from my phone of the commissions themselves. Um, so, the brief, which was quite simple and quite open. Imagine and design a concept for a large-scale public, public engagement project that is open, original, and optimistic, will exist in places and spaces across the UK, real, virtual, or both, and reach millions of people globally. Pretty easy, I think. Um, now for some context, and for that we have to go back to the very beginning. So when the Prime Minister, um, a few Prime Ministers ago, Theresa May, used her platform at the Conservative Party conference to show a £120 million commitment to the creative industries, it is fair to say some eyebrows within those industries were raised. It is also fair to say that whilst an announcement of £120 million for a festival of creativity was unexpected, it was not without precedent. The UK has a history of impactful national programs of creative new work. The Cultural Olympiad um, saw similar budgets committed to an ambitious celebration of arts and culture supporting the once-in-a-generation London Olympic Games. And 1418 now supported a diverse program of artist-led commissioning exploring new forms of remembrance across the UK on the centenary of the Great War. Um, although both very different, what links these major investments into the richness of the UK's cultural life was an existing context and rationale. It was clear before any commission was announced what, what they were for, their reason for being was never in question. The announcement of a then unnamed festival of creativity by the Prime Minister was in this respect something very different. It was without any such context except for two stated aims. Bring people together, and celebrate creativity. But of course, this isn't wholly correct. For many, if not, not an overwhelming majority of those who take notice to such things, the context was and is very much there. This was an announcement made against what was then um, an unprecedented backdrop of division and political turmoil. And in that respect, it was abundantly clear what this festival was for. So, before a single idea was hatched, a single conversation had, a reason for existing was already created for and not by this non-existent festival with no name. A festival that was now tainted by a perceived purpose, subject to a very public budget and the need to address those two objectives. Vicky touched on this, but I think it's probably worth making it clear and underlining at this point that for anyone involved in Unboxed, then and now, the shadow of the Festival of Brexit has loomed large in all aspects of its development and delivery and social media interactions, but most importantly as a lesson in what not to do. Um, many of the UK-wide cultural events that came before had established a precedent, and with precedent comes expectation. Expectation from funders, stakeholders, artists, and audience. Expectation, there is a kind of existing format that this thing should follow. Look at what has gone before and do that again. Do it like that, but do it differently. Whilst an existing format is very useful in many ways, not having one is both an opportunity and a risk. An opportunity to try something different and a risk because something different is never the easy option. It was clear 
from the beginning that regardless of the approach chosen, proving this festival's worth to both audience and the UK's creative community was never going to be the easy option. The opportunity was there to explore new ways of doing things, to make work in new ways. Having no inherited structures in place, we were able to design a process of ideation that was as valuable as the work itself. This was something from, that from the outset had to be useful, um, be that a much needed mass job creation scheme focused on sectors decimated by the pandemic, a chance to begin to address structural inequalities in those same sectors, or to create an R&D process that had its own intrinsic value over and above the end project. And running through it all, like a stick of rock, is this one singular, super simple idea that informs everything we've done, which I think is important to explain as much of the criticism leveled at Unboxed is that it is an ethereal idea not pegged to anything, or that these extraordinary commissions, rooted in deep research and even deeper ethical considerations, dealing with the most weighty themes imaginable in captivating, profound, awe-inspiring, engaging, and often hilarious ways are mere baubles not linked to anything. So, once again, for those at the back. Um, Unboxed is a celebration of the potential for collective imagination and creative collaboration to shape better futures for people and planet. By that mean, I mean we are interested in how, through collaborative practice, ideas are inspired and then shaped into deliverable projects at scale, and particularly interested in the intrinsic value of that process and the role of the commissioner in shaping it. A project like Unboxed can and should represent an opportunity to place the idea and value of collaborative creativity and the role of creativity in general at the heart of national discourse, from education to civic life, from shaping the future of work and economy uh, to ensuring the future of our planet. Creativity, and in particular working together through collaborative creativity, has never been more important. Just as creativity is not the preserve of any one sector, it does not reside in any one place. And if Unbox was to happen, it had to happen at all, it had to aspire to happen everywhere and be for everyone. This is place-based programming on an epic scale. Often, national celebrations tend to impose a top-down sense of a, a benign shared identity, and in that respect, Unbox was designed to be different. A lesson from place-based programming, be that cities of culture or boroughs of culture, is that places cannot and should not be curated. Developers love the idea of place-making, but places are already made. They are also pure chaos, a deafening cacophony of different communities coexisting in all their messy glory. What happens when that chaos isn't a small city, but across four nations, while well, the din is even louder. And perhaps a job of a project like Unbox is just to turn that volume up. For me, the 10 commissions of Unboxed are the embodiment of this glorious cacophony, um, deliberately not imposing this top-down notion of national identity, but celebrating the pluralism and dynamism of the UK as we are today and, ex and actively explore where we want to go with our tomorrows. The work, uh, the work is of the moment, reacting to and reflective of the time it was created. Collectivism is activism, and this is why it was important to put out an open call for, for ideas, N not for ideas, just teams. Any creative work would and should be paid for. This was an act, um, this was a public statement about the value of creativity, and that creative work is real work. It was intended that this approach would result in original collaborations between creative minds who may not ordinary, ordinarily meet and work together. In essence, the more diverse the team, the more exciting the potential. The formation of these teams was to be viewed as a creative act. It was important that also by employing the acronym STEAM, we were highlighting that creative, creativity is not owned by any one sector and began to create the environment to enable the exploration of the unlimited potential that can be unleashed when diverse specialisms come together and collaborate on a shared idea. We wanted and managed to attract individuals who want to make a difference. People who wanted to use this opportunity to affect change.
Through this process, we were fascinated at what other crossovers of imagination between the widest range of sectors and creatives we could encourage. After all, engineers draw on both mathematics and aesthetics to build their bridges. Computer games makers need physics and psychology and storytelling to ensure their virtual worlds feel real. It can feel as though we are standing on the edge of the abyss. But given advances in sciences and technology and the innate creativity in all of us, there is an opportunity to use these new tools at our disposal to help shape and point the way to more optimistic, more equitable futures. Very early on, when Unbox was Festival UK 2022, along with its rather awkward acronym, the words open, original, and optimistic were settled on as a kind of mission statement. Looking back then and now, and given what has happened and continues to happen globally, the daily warnings of threats to all our futures, the entrenched systematic inequalities, our worst fears can feel justified and existential. And often the most difficult word out of those three to cling on to is optimistic, but that is why it is the most important one. But optimism needs to be grounded in practical reality, not just feeding an increasingly empty sense of hope, it needs to be justified. Optimism allows us to hold on to a belief in the endless potential of human creativity, the desire of us all to see better futures and by working together to use that creativity to invent solutions. It is interesting when you look in detail at each of the commissions, every single one is addressing a particular issue. Every single one is focused in some way in affecting some form of positive change. All 10 commissions intend to make the world better in some way. So, in short, to invest in the idea of collaborative, cross-sector creativity is not just a neat way to develop an original cultural program, it is how we ensure the future of both people and planet. And is best sum up, summed up by this banner, um, which was unfurled on a hillside at Blaunau Festiniog um, during the final act of the final commission to open, Gawad. Um, if we can't imagine a positive future, we can't create one. Um, I'm going to end on a short film now. As part of our commitment to being open, all material created for and by the R&D process will be made available to anyone as a commons. This is a taster of that content created, which was created both as provocation and inspiration for the idea processes. And you will see the spirit of Unbox that I just described has certainly been there from the very beginning. Thank you very much. We will enter our shared imaginary world. Any act of cultural creation never has just one person or one story behind it. Creativity is at the heart of any new world we seek to build. Is it possible to bring everyone together? Conversation is a vital feature when trying to imagine different futures. It can only have positive effects on society. If we're truly to solve world problems, we need the two, the arts and sciences, to work together. There is no planet B. What can we do to envision and ensure a more united and inclusive world for ourselves and for others? It's through the power of technology and social media networks and building communities we can find unity in a divided world. I kept hearing again and again that I had to make a choice between art and science. If you can somehow harness that spirit, build that sense of community, you'll get a strong, loyal following. The danger is that we limit ourselves and each other. The alternative story is there for us to write together. So let us rise above the chorus of our age and dare to sing a different song. A um, very pandemic-y moment. Um, this is the first time I've ever met in person Elle Ossley Wood, who was absolutely instrumental in the R&D process and the commissioning of the project. And it gives me an utter, it's utter pleasure to invite her to the stage for um, the next panel. And I look forward to catching up with you later. <laughs>